I just got a new editing software program thing, and I'm still trying to figure it out. So if my videos seem a little off right now, that's why. Please bear with me. I'm so sorry, but I am not technologically smart, so I, I'm not very good at computer editing things. So, I'm sorry. A lawyer? You said lawyer really weird there? <laughs> Jay and today I'm here with my December wrap-up part one. I read a total of 11 books so I'm going to split it into two parts. I wouldn't say that this month's reading was a good month of reading. I gave a lot of like really low ratings but I also gave a lot of really high ratings so I don't know it was kind of like an average reading month but Without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> the first book that I have is called The Enemy by Charlie Higson, and this I gave a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows a group of kids who are living in a supermarket in London after a disease causes all the adults in the world to basically turn into zombies. There is a rumor going around that there is a safe place to go and it's basically the journey of these kids trying to get to this safe place before they get eaten by zombies. I started off really liking the book. It was really entertaining, but then it just seemed like it dragged on for way too long, like an unnecessary amount of time. It was very gruesome and gory, but it just became repetitive after a while. Like it would be like the kids are walking for a little while and then the zombies would come and then they'd kill the zombies and then they'd be walking again and then the zombies would come and then they'd kill the zombies, etc, etc. The book was very action-packed. There was a lot of fight scenes, which I enjoy because I like to be thrilled. But I didn't really care about any of the characters. I didn't care who lived and who died. The best part was honestly the end where we had the zombies perspective. It was kind of cool like reading from a zombies perspective. But like it was an okay book. I don't know if I'll continue with this series. There's like seven books or something, but I don't know, I haven't decided. Maybe if I find it in the thrift store, I'll pick it up, but I'm not gonna go out of my way to find the rest of it. The next book I read this month is called Choker by Elizabeth Woods, and I ended up giving this a one out of five stars. It's about a girl named Kara who has to move away from her best friend Zoe several years ago. She has to start at a new school by herself, and she's never really been popular anyway, so it's very hard for her to adjust to this new life. After an unfortunate incident at her school in the cafeteria, people begin to call her choker. Then one night Zoe returns and asks Kara if she will help her hide her from her parents and Kara agrees and everything is fine and that's when Zoe offers to give Kara a makeover and her whole life basically changes. She's now one of the popular girls and she's being invited to parties where she can flirt with her crush Ethan. That's when tragedy strikes in her hometown and a girl goes missing and everybody becomes a suspect, including Ethan. The book is very predictable. By page 30, I knew what the giant plot twist was going to be at the end and I was right and that just annoys me. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know I hate being able to call the ending of books and the fact that I could do it in 30 pages really sucked. I think that all the characters were really annoying and boring and one-dimensional. Kara really pissed me off. The entire book was basically just her complaining about how she had no friends, but it didn't seem like she was putting in an effort to make any friends, so that just really bothered me. Basically, the only thing she cared about was getting Ethan to like her, but she couldn't even say hi to him without like hyperventilating so it was just all really annoying and I don't understand why she puked so much it's like every chapter she was puking and it's just like girl hold it in like hold it in it, it was too much I also had a huge problem with the parents in this book if they knew what was going on in her life I highly doubt they would leave her alone for so long obviously I can't tell you what I mean by that but it was just super unrealistic and it just bothered me so much so overall just super not exciting and not thrilling and just the plot twist was stupid and it was just highly predictable so one out of five stars I wouldn't recommend it but I mean you can read it if you want. The next book I have is called After and this is by Amy Ifa and I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It follows a girl who's 15 years old. Her name is Devin Davenport and she recently had a baby and in a fit of panic she stuffs her newborn into a garbage can outside her apartment. The baby ends up being discovered and a murder trial begins. I wanted 
to enjoy this book and it was interesting to read but I kind of found it very boring. The book did seem very realistic. All the characters seemed genuine and the events that happened seemed like they would actually happen in this scenario. I feel that the book could have been a lot shorter and still had the same impact that it had. I think that it was a very thought-provoking book but there was absolutely no plot really and it just dragged on and on for me. I also really hated the ending of the book. It really lowered my rating. I probably would have given it a 3 if the ending was different. It just was not what I wanted to happen so that's probably just a me thing. But it was a thought-provoking book. I just don't think it was the book for me. The next book I have is called Bonfire and this is by Kristen Ryder and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The book follows Abby Williams who leaves her hometown of Barron's and moves to Chicago to become an environmentalist lawyer. She turns to Barron's and works on this case involving a big company called Optimal Plastics and as she's investing investigating the company, she begins to find these strange connections between a case involving a girl named Casey Mitchell who disappeared many years ago. The connections lead to a ritual from her hometown called The Game and she begins to realize that she doesn't know exactly who she can trust. This was one of my most anticipated reads for November so I'm so happy that I got my hands on a copy of it. It was so Good. The book definitely does not feel like a debut novel. Literally from the first page you need to know what happens next and how everything is connected and who to trust, who not to trust. Like it's just a huge roller coaster. I really liked how the story had glimpses in the past but also the present and I think that all the characters were very well developed. I really liked Abby as a narrator. She was very unreliable which I personally love in books. I desperately wanted to know what actually happened to Casey. I did not see what happened coming, so I really liked it. Because as we know, your girl hates being able to call the endings and I could not call it. So, so definitely recommend this book if you're into like thriller novels with lots of suspense. This, this is a good one for y'all. Just saying. And the final two books that I'm going to talk about in this part of the wrap-up are ones that I really really hated. I have a rant review if you're interested in checking it out. But they are Bad Taste in Boys and Bad Hair Day by Carrie Harris. Um, I hated them. Don't read them. They were stupid. Check out my rant review if you're really interested. I kind of go off. So yeah, don't read them. That's all I have to say about these. Alright guys, so that was part one, the first six books that I read this month out of 11. Now let me know down below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them, and stay tuned for part two coming out soon. And I will see you all in my next video. Good.